In her medical records, the doctors wrote that Augustine had immobility, complete relaxation of muscle tissues, decreased body temperature and blood pressure. She was also unresponsive to light, sound, and painful sensations. But at the same time, she retained swallowing and chewing movements, which made it possible to feed her liquid food. Relatives took sleeping Augustine home and began to care for her on their own. For 22 years, Sleeping Beauty gave signs of life, she opened her mouth to eat, twitched her arms and legs slightly, but did not respond to the voice of her loved ones and even her daughter. But the most inexplicable thing was that, despite the long time spent in a lethargic sleep, Leggard remained the same young and her appearance had not changed in any way. Two decades later, doctors warned the family of Augustine that it is unlikely she will wake up and advise to prepare for the worst. But the woman surprised everyone. Two years after doctors had given up hope of her return, she suddenly woke up, and her first words were, I need to feed my baby. But instead of an infant, Augustine saw a grown daughter who looked like her like two drops of water. The reason for her youthfulness was that in lethargic sleep, the aging processes in the human body are strongly inhibited, and the person asleep may not change for decades. But this effect is short-lived and Augustine literally made up for her biological age in 14 months and aged before her eyes. The Mystical Story of Nikolai Gogol The writer Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol is known to many since high school. Almost everyone has read his works on the school program, but few know the sad fate of this talented man. Throughout his life, the writer suffered from a strange ailment, due to which he very often fell into a lethargic sleep resembling death. Gogol's body became paralyzed, he had almost no heartbeat and no breathing. Such incidents very much frightened the relatives and friends of Nikolai Vasilievich, although they were short-lived. Modern doctors believe that such health disorders were due to the fact that Gogol suffered from malaria, which damaged his mental and physical state. All this affected his psyche and was most likely the main reason for the attacks of lethargy. In turn, historians blame the doctors of the time and unanimously argue that if the writer had received timely psychological care, he could have been saved. In his personal diary, Gobel wrote that he was terribly afraid of being buried alive and could not find a solution to his problem. This developed into a severe fear, taphobia. He even drew up a will in which he indicated some peculiarities of the treatment of his body in the field of real death. In his burial manual, Nikolai Vasilyevich wrote, Do not bury me until I begin to decompose. I would like to remind you that I am very ill and the attacks of my illness may be mistaken for my death. His fears were unfounded. What he had feared all his life had happened. But due to an unfortunate set of circumstances, people close to him did not take his last wish seriously and buried the writer according to church rites on the third day after his death. Only in 1931 Goebbels will was remembered during the reburial of his body. During the exhumation of the corpse, the people who opened the coffin were shocked by the fact that the lid was torn with fingernails from the inside and the skeleton was bent in an unnatural position. There were also rumors that there was no head in the writer's casket. However, historians claim that in 1909 the monks were restoring Gogol's tomb and stole his skull. This was done at the request of the famous collector Bakrushin, who paid the monks a large sum for the head of Nikolai Vasilievich. Today, the skull is housed in the Bakrushin Theater Museum. After the exhumation there was another unpleasant after the exhumation, another curious thing happened, all the celebrities who attended the reburial behaved extremely indecently and literally tore the poor writer's remains to pieces. Parts of his decayed clothes, shoes and some of his bones were stolen and sent to closed collections. Where all this is now is not known. The Living Dead in Morgues Waking up people who were thought to be deceased is not new in the history of medicine. As early as the 18th century, mortuaries had a large bell near each body, so that in the event of a sudden awakening from a lethargic sleep, the person could call for help from the orderlies. This custom still exists in some European countries, but there have been no accounts of dead people waking up. The worst case happened in 196 4 when a young pathologist was preparing to autopsy a corpse that had arrived at the morgue the day before. The doctor prepared all the necessary tools and brought a scalpel to the man's stomach, but as soon as the blade touched the skin, the dead man suddenly opened his eyes and screamed. Unfortunately, the doctor could not endure what happened and died on the spot from a broken heart.
A similar situation occurred in one of the morgues in Great Britain, where a group of students under the guidance of a famous surgeon came for practice. A corpse of a homeless girl, who had spent more than two days in a freezer, was used as a training object. The professor began to read a lecture on the rules of autopsy and at the point where he was talking about how to properly cut the body, the girl slowly stood up and sat down on the operating table. Fortunately this time there were no casualties and no one was frightened. The living dead in morgues. Waking up people who were thought to be deceased is not new in the history of medicine. As early as the 18th century, mortuaries had a large belt near each body, so that in the event of a sudden awakening from a lethargic sleep, the person could call for help from the orderlies. This custom still exists in some European countries, but there have been no accounts of dead people waking up. The worst case happened in 196 4 when a young pathologist was preparing to autopsy a corpse that had arrived at the morgue the day before. The doctor prepared all the necessary tools and brought a scalpel to the man's stomach, but as soon as the blade touched the skin, the dead man suddenly opened his eyes and screamed. Unfortunately, the doctor could not endure what happened and died on the spot from a broken heart. A similar situation occurred in one of the morgues in Great Britain, where a group of students under the guidance of a famous surgeon came for practice. A corpse of a homeless girl, who had spent more than two days in a freezer, was used as a training object. The professor began to read a lecture on the rules of autopsy and at the point where he was talking about how to properly cut the body, the girl slowly stood up and sat down on the operating table. Fortunately this time there were no casualties and no one was frightened. The officer who got lucky. There is an account preserved in the city archives of England of an officer who fell from his horse and smashed his head on a rock. During one of the battles, the man's horse reared up and threw his rider to the ground. As he fell, his head hit a large boulder and he lost consciousness. The officer was taken to a military hospital where he stayed for several days. Medics made every effort to revive him, but eventually gave up and documented his death. The man's body was sent to the morgue, where it was subsequently given to his family for burial according to church traditions of the time. It so happened that the weather was very hot on the day of the funeral and the gravediggers did not make much effort to bury the body of the deceased. They carelessly tossed soil on the coffin and left. A few days later, relatives of the deceased officer visited the grave, and one of them noticed some quiet movement in the ground and a noise that came from beneath. The man rushed to the cemetery keeper, took a shovel from him, and began digging up the earth. It turned out that the officer was able to breathe through a small hole in the ground because of the gravedigger's negligence and he was even able to lift the coffin lid slightly, which caused the earth to move on the grave. His awakening was called second birth by medics and was surprised that, despite his long stay in the morgue and cemetery, the man was in excellent physical condition and only complained of pain in the back of his head, which was a consequence of a fall from a horse. His story is one of the few times a man has managed to get out of a coffin alive after awakening from a lethargic sleep. There have been cases where help arrived too late and the man, buried alive, simply suffocated in the coffin. The saddest case was that of a woman who fell into a lethargic sleep in her last month of pregnancy. She was mistaken for dead and buried alive. They only found out about this when a boy who was walking through the cemetery heard screams from the grave and ran frightened to call for adults. When the grave was dug up, it was already too late. The woman had suffocated, and with her in the coffin lay a child who had been born prematurely because of his mother's severe emotional stress. He was also dead. Today's medical facilities are equipped with modern equipment that can record even the faintest breathing and heartbeat of a patient. Therefore, the cases of those buried alive have passed into the category of unbelievable incidents and can be encountered only in books or in horror movies. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.